Hello students, how are you doing? Today I'm going to discuss in a short video how can we write equation of a normal lines and tangent planes. Let's go back and see something that some of us like to do once in a while. And that something is playing pool. Therefore, whenever we play pool, which I haven't played in a long time, we have so many balls and we have one cue ball. Sometimes the ball is located at some point, which is line up with the cue ball and by hitting the cue ball and the cue ball hitted the ball, the ball travel straight to the net. Okay. The question is, whenever we hit the cue ball, we're going to apply some force. That force created some kind of energy and moved the cue ball. But the minute the ball, cue ball hit that point, it transferred 100% of its energy to the ball and the cue ball suddenly stopped. I'm sorry, and 100% of energy goes, transfers to the ball, and the ball is going to go through the net, and we are pretty much the winner of the game. They call this one the line of impact, and that line of impact is nothing except a line normal to the level curve right here. And remember, if the cue ball and the ball are collinear with the net, all three of them, all you need is a line of impact. The line is normal, transfer 100% energy. The cue ball will stay here and transfer all the energy to here and go through the net. But sometimes the cue ball is here. And you have a choice of sending the ball in this net or that net. Remember, these three are not collinear. See, this is create a line. This create a line. This three created a plane and is not collinear. Therefore, if you want to send this ball here, you have to, your line of impact pretty much is going to be like let me see. It's going to be like this. Let me see if I can do it. That's the line of impact. Then when you hit the cue ball, you apply some force. The force is ch changes to some kind of energy. The energy causes for the cue ball come here. But because they are not collinear, it transfers some of the energy to this one and keep some of them and the cue ball go stop right here someplace or hit the side and go someplace else. Therefore, that ball does not get 100% of the energy. But when it hit here, it hit on the side and that side is nothing except a portion of the ball. It just slices it. It's just like whenever you're rubbing against another car, whenever there is a car in here and you're trying to pull out, you rub against it. That's called a tangent plane. But the question is here, what do you, how do you write the equation of that tangent plane? That tangent plane need a normal line, normal vector, and that normal vector is nothing except the gradient of the surface, which is orth normal to the level curve. Therefore, today we're going to talk about how can we write the equation of a normal lines 
an equation of a tangent plane using the gradient of a surface. Therefore, if you have x squared plus y squared plus z squared, this is nothing except your cue ball, and that's equal to 9. And see, that's 9 is too much. How about 4? Therefore, the cue ball has a radius of 2 inch. <laughs> I want to know what is the gradient of it. Remember, gradient going to have partial due respect to x, partial due respect to y, partial due respect to z. Because in order to write equation of a plane, you need directional numbers. Directional vector, you need a vectors, a normal vectors. And that ve or normal vector had to be in R3, and you need x component, y component, and a z component. Therefore, I'm going to write this one. Remember, this is only a relationship between x, y, z. It has two x intercept, two y intercept, two z intercept. It's not a function. Function for every one order tripled, you must only have, have an one output. Therefore, I'm going to write this one as a W of x, y, z equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus a 4. <laughs> and as we talked about the level surfaces in previous video, if I make this one a 0, you do have... A what? Remember, this is four dimension right now. This is four dimension. If the W is zero, these three going to make at the ground level a sphere. What happens if the W become a one and this become your Y, that's become your Z, and that's become your X, and these are your negative exponent? At that height, you're also going to have a sphere. Therefore, if that W is zero, you have a level sphere at the origin. If W become one, you have a level sphere at the height of one. W become two, you have a level sphere at the height of two. But remember, whenever you have a level curve or a level sphere, these are called either plane curve or plane or surface curve. Plane curve and surface curve. Then right now, in order to make it plane curve and surface curve, I have to parameterize it. it means your x, y, z has to be a function of another parameter. Therefore, I'm going to say if I have a w, of x, y, z, and this one is a function of x, and this is a function of y, this is a function of z, and make this one become a function of a t. That parameterization. Then how many passes take you to w? Three passes. Therefore, because this is only branches once, you have to use ordinary differential notation but because from w branches three you have to do the partial therefore the partial w respect to x which is this is nothing except partial due to respect to x times dx dt plus partial derivative of a w respect to y dy a dt plus partial derivative of a w respect to z dz dt equal to, this is nothing except the derivative of a W respect to T. This is the change of the W. But when I have level surface, and my level surface, which is at the height of 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, at that height, the W is fixed, because I said W is 3. And at the height of 3, you have a level surface, which is the sphere with the radius of 2. Therefore, your W is fixed, is constant. Therefore, what is the change in W? Zero. That is only if it's a level curve or level surface. 
not any other condition. And this one I'm considered as a level surface. And therefore, this is the partial derivative of respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, partial derivative with respect to z. This is the sum of three product, the sum of three product, the sum of three product. I write it as a product of two vectors. And this is dx dt, dy dt, and a dz dt. This is nothing except the gradient f. And this is nothing except dot. That's r prime. And is equal to zero. Therefore, you better know if this is your level curve, this is your r prime. And your gradient, their dot product is zero, means these are normal to each other. Therefore, from today, you have to know the gradient is normal to the level curve and is also normal to the level surface. Okay, then let's play a game. I have a surface someplace right here. And I said that surface is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 4. At the point of 1 and a 2. Well, when x is 1, y is 2. That's 5. And that's equal to 4. Well, I am sorry. That z is going to have two values because this is 5. Go to other side, become negative 1. You cannot take the square of a negative 1. Therefore, I, in order for me to write this, I have to be able to have an order triple that satisfies this. Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to say at the x of 0, y of 0, z of 2. Is that satisfied? Yes. What is the equation of a normal line? Well, first, in order to write the equation of a normal line, is x equal to x naught plus at, y equal to y naught plus bt, and z equal to z naught plus ct. This is your x naught. This is your y naught. This is your z naught. But I need a directional number. A normal line and a gradient are parallel to each other. But when you want to write a gradient, you have to write this one in terms of a four dimension surface. Therefore, you, this is, you have to be written as a W equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus a 4. Then you can find the gradient of the W, which is 2x and a 2y and a 2z. Then at the x of 0, at the y of 0, and the z of 2, your gradient is 0 zero and a four. Therefore, in here, your equation of a line, x is always zero, y is always a zero, but your z is two plus four t. Therefore, for any t, your x and y are always zero, but your z is always changes. Let's do another one. I'm going to say that is my surface. And my surface is z equal to x squared y cubed. Here, as an instructor, they said, find it at the point of 1 and a negative 1. Well, that's not hard to find the z. Because this is your x naught. This is your y naught. 
that relationship will give you the z naught, and your z naught is equal to one squared times negative one cubed, and that's the negative one. Therefore, your x naught, y naught, and a z naught is one negative one and a negative one. I got it. But I need a vector. My vector comes from the gradient. This one has to be written in form of a function with four variables to write as a function. Means for every order pair, you have one and one output. Therefore, I'm going to write this one a W. And I'm going to write x squared y is cubed minus a z. Therefore, for every different order tripled, you're going to have only and only one W. Therefore, that is a function. Then, if your X is 1, your Y is negative 1, and your Z is negative 1, very much we know what the W is. Therefore, we know that level surface at what height it is. Therefore, I need to write the equation of the normal line. Therefore, I need my gradient respect to x. That's 2xy cubed. I need my gradient respect to y. x squared, 3y squared. And respect to z, this is 0 and it's a negative 1. Therefore, if your x naught is 1, your y naught is negative 1, your gradient at that point is 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2. 1 square, negative 1 square is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3 and a negative 1. This is nothing except your directional numbers. Therefore, your equation of a line is x equal to x naught plus a t y equal to y naught plus b t z equal to z naught plus c t that is the equation of a line what kind of a line that's the line of impact at what point at that point to that surface Therefore, that's the equation of a normal line. And somebody said, okay, who cares that this is the equation of a normal line? I want you to look at this right here and think of this one is a strainer with a whole bunch of point on the surface of the strainer. I'm going to cap it and I'm going to put them on top of the water hose. What happened? The water is going to exit from here in this way, the water comes here, the water coming in here, the water coming in here, the water goes that way, the water goes that way, the water goes that way. And somebody going to ask you, how much force is applied to that strainer? Oh, all of that force? You better say, this is a normal line, this is a normal line, this is a normal line, this is a normal line. Those are all of them normal lines. Are they, whenever, I'm, I'm, uh, I want you to please pay attention, I, I, didn't, I didn't say it correctly. Is these are all making 90 degree angle? No, they don't make 90 degree angle. The one making 90 degree angle is a normal line. The one making 90 degree is a normal line. These are not making 90 degree angle with the strainer. None of them make a 90 degree with a strainer. None of them make a 90 degree with a strainer. Then what is the force? is the sum of the projection of those over the normal line. Projection, 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 projection. Therefore, eventually, later on, you have to know the equation of a normal line because all the forces must be projected over the normal line to find the cumulative sum of all the forces. And somebody else said, then why do I have to find equation of a tangent plane? Somebody said, okay, this is the surface. What is the surface area? Surface area is consist 
of infinitely, 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 infinitely many small pieces. And all of those pieces are tangent to the surface. Then if I be able to find the equation of that plane, that plane, that plane, that plane, that plane, and if I find the area of each of these tangent planes and add it up together, I get the surface area. Therefore, all I have to do, find a representative tangent plane, one representative, area one, and you cannot find the area of it if you don't know the length and the width. In order to know the length and the width, you have to have the equation of a plane. Then when you know it, then you can triple integrate it. Because that's a surface, you need triple integral. One of them do respect to X, one do respect to Y, one do respect to Z. This has to be respect to Z, this has to be respect to Y, this has to be respect to X. Therefore, this is called the inside integral, this is called the middle integral, and this is called the last integral. Therefore, eventually in the future, all of them are very important. Therefore, we're going to do one more problem, and we're going to say, I do have a Z equal to 4 minus six squared minus five y squared and at the point of negative one and a three i do have to have a z value because these are for equation of a tangent plane and in x not y not z not maybe they give you an order pair therefore i'm going to plug it in here and find my z myself negative one squared is one three squared is nine 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 minus a 45, 45 is negative 42. That's negative 42. What is the equation of a plane? A times x minus x naught plus y, I'm sorry, b times y minus a y naught plus c, z minus a z naught equal to 0. Remember, at the previous chapter, I gave you the normal vector to find the equation of a tangent plane. But I'm no longer going to give you that. Because I gave you the surface. And I told you the gradient of a surface is normal to the level surface <coughs> at that point. Then in order to find the gradient, you have to write this one in explicit form. You have to write in terms of a function. And you said the W of X, Y, Z is equal to, it depends if you want to put the surface on the top or below. If you want to put them on the top, you want to make sure that C is a positive. Therefore, keep this one positive and bring everything to this side. But if you bring the Z to the other side, Therefore, you're going to do it in the negative side of Z. Therefore, I'm going to keep the Z here, but I'm going to bring the X squared and Y squared the other side, but the X, the 4, become a negative. What is my gradient respect to X? 2X. To Y? 10Y. To Z? 1. What happened if I moved the Z to the other side? That would become negative 2X negative 10y and a negative one same thing except those coefficient would be negative and then eventually you have to move it to other side to make it a positive therefore at the point of negative one three and a negative 42 your gradient which is your normal vector is negative 2 30 and a negative 42. This is partial due to respect to x, this is partial due to respect to y, this is partial due to respect to z. From now on, when I ask you to write the equation of a tangent plane, instead of a, a you write partial due to respect to x. Instead of b, you put partial due to respect to y. Instead of a c, you write partial due to respect to z. Because your gradient is normal to the level surface. And tell me what is the partial derivative with respect to x at that point is a negative 2. x minus x naught. And what is your f of y is 30. 
times y minus y naught. Minus 42 z minus z naught. Oh, let me see. Yep, negative 42 equal to zero. I want you to solve for equation of a plane by multiply this, become negative 2x, that's the positive, make it a negative 2, 30y minus a 90 minus a 42z, negative time negative is a positive, that become negative 42 squared equal to zero. Do you see that x is negative? I'm going to move it to the other side to start with a positive coefficient. My y go to the other side, become a negative. My z go to the other side, it become a positive. And because I move this to the other side, I'm going to keep this one where it is, keep this one where it is, and keep this one where it is. Therefore, if you want to divide it by 2, I'm perfectly fine with it. Make sure on the right side is also divisible by 2. If it's not, simplify this one, and that's called equation of a tangent plane. Therefore, in this lesson, you should be able to use your gradient to write equation of a normal line and equation of a tangent plane. Thank you.